Resurrected River, New Jersey, and you're here for a Sunday night, and tonight we're doing the New Age Jesus. We had quite a time this morning. I didn't know how we got started off or where we, we got going, but we started shouting and yelling and carrying on, and Jesus Christ was expressing his ire at the religious set, and I'm sure he still does because I know you do. So it was, it was quite an interesting time. See? And, and what you hear tonight, if we study Jesus Christ, and you know, we use that new age word, because that, you see, the problem was well, people will grab anything. There's nothing wrong with the expression new age, because it is a new age. I mean, it's like saying it's a new moon or a new month. It is. But people in a religious group take and they say, new age, my God, stay away from it, see? Yeah. And right then and there, they instantly cut themselves off from everything. It doesn't make any difference whether the person is good, whether the person has something beautiful to say. They say, stay away from it. And that's the unfortunate part about Christianity. They, 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 they fall on a word and scare everybody away from everything. I mean, there are things in New Age that are sure are not profitable and not good. But there's things, plenty of things in the Old Age that are not profitable and not good. But they generalize about everything. So that's all bad. I think most people who have come into this place have found, indeed, I would say, if you want to put a label on us, although I don't like labels, you could say it's New Age. But it certainly follows the biblical principles and it follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. And something has to be done to separate you from the old age of all of that violence and guilt. So basically, religion tells us about the divinity of Jesus Christ. It dwells on that. So that's what's important to them, his divinity. But that's not what Jesus himself talked about. Jesus talked about our divinity. So, and this is the important thing for everybody to get through your head. It is you working your way to Christ consciousness to become him. Right. Not to continually pray to him to help you. Because he wanted you to be able to stand on your own two feet. So that life would crumble in your path as him. Not constantly looking to some man to come running after you. Take a look at the book of John in your little Bible. And page 104 if, in those little Bibles. John chapter 14. And let me see what Jesus Christ said, okay? And this is the interesting part. And if you'll go with me on this, I think you'll be able to try to understand things of your own value. Who you are, what you are. Forget about your age, forget about your health, forget about your circumstances, at least for this hour, and realize that if you'll allow yourself to accept this divinity, these things can crumble. These things can be controlled by you. John 14 and verse 12, chapter 14 and cha verse 12. Verily, verily, that word verily means doggone, I'm telling you the truth, and you can take it to the bank. He that believes on me. In other words, just stop right there and ask yourself, he's not saying if you believe that he lived. He's saying if you will do what he tells you to do. He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. In fact, greater works than these shall he do. Now, who in the world can you walk into a mainline Christian church and say, hey, I can do better than Jesus? You know they'll throw you out. You know they'll say you're a cult because they don't believe him, and yet they'll call him Lord. What's the sense of saying the man is Lord and running around with Jesus stuff in your pockets if you don't believe the guy? He's saying you should do better than he did. Not as good as he did, better than he did. And that's quite a challenge. And that's quite a challenge in faith to separate from the mob out there and say, I am not following you and laying on my knees and groveling around for a couple of pennies. This man says, I can do better than him, and he's Christ. I'm going to do it. Sorry. I'm going to do it because he said to do it. And why did he say he could do it? Because if you believe, look, if he that believes in me, these works because why? I go unto my Father, you see? Because if you will believe his teachings, you will go to the Father because he goes to the Father. The reason that you'll do as good as he does is because he's telling you how to go to the Father and because that he has found the Father, you can find the Father. 
because he goes to the Father, you can go to the Father. That's why if you believe him in the fact that he goes to the Father, you'll be able to do it, and the things that he does, you'll be able to do. Because you'll also start to think with the right hemisphere. You'll also start to find the power that dwells within you, and you'll also thumb your nose at all of this religious stuff and start walking in realms of celestial universal God power instead of groveling around hoping that some guy's coming back on a white horse over at Kennedy Airport somewhere. He didn't want you thinking that nonsense. He wants you to understand what a white horse is. In any gosh darn mythology, in any religion going since the beginning of time, a white horse is a pure consciousness. This is the only barbaric, superstitious, Christianity religion that thinks a white horse is <laughs> loping along. Only one religion is so barbarically superstitious to believe that that white horse means that. Any religion in the world knows that white horse is a pure consciousness. Anyone. And you can read it. You can read in the Bhagavad Gita of Christ. You can read it all over the place. It's either a white bull, it's either a white horse, it's a white elephant, whatever you want to call it, it's a white horse, which means a pure consciousness. This is the only religion I've ever read of where the people are so infantile, they actually think it's a four-legged horse. You've got to come to grips with that. Al was telling me he was sitting down in wherever he was, and he looked up, and there was a book of mythology sitting in some student had in wherever you were, and he just thumbed through it to... He came up with the, the gods in Greek or something like that. There were 12 of them. And it hit, click, bang, bang. Shortly there were 12 of them. That's why there's 12 signs of the zodiac. That's why there's 12 disciples. That's why there's 12 apostles. That's why there's 12 months in the year. That's why there's 12 people in a jury. All of that stuff comes from the same place, the heaven. All of that comes from the same place, the heaven. So Jesus Christ is saying, look it, I know how to get to God inside myself. I know how to go to the Father. And if you believe what I tell you, you'll go too. I go to the Father. Come on, you can go to the Father. Remember what I said to you this morning. If God loves Jesus one speck more than he loves you, he disqualifies himself as God. Jesus cannot be one speck more important to God than you are. And it brings things down in perspective when you start to look at that. So your divinity is what is called Christ consciousness. And it's interesting, in the, in the Hindu movement of Krishna, divine Hindu personality is called Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness. And Krishna means Christ. Hare Krishna means Christ the Son. That's exactly what it means. The deep level of divine consciousness is not something that came with the new age it's always been that way it's always been that way look at here go to page 27 in your little bible go to the book of matthew and go to matthew chapter 25 okay this is not something new you know this is the amazing thing christianity has got its pants scared off because there's a lot of people who are finding what jesus said existed the kingdom of god within them they're frightened by that now, where did this come from? Did this come from uh, uh, G when Jesus arrived, when the New Testament was written, when the Old Testament was written? Where did this come from? Look what it says, Matthew 25, and go to verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. What's his right hand is the right hemisphere of your brain. He's not saying it to those who are on his left. He is not saying it to you who function out of the carnal mind. He is saying it to you who function out of the right side. That's the only way that you can function out of the right side is when you go into meditation. Okay? Then shall they say, Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay? Watch what it said. Now listen to what it said. Don't just read it. That's what's wrong with this religious stuff. They read the Bible and then they say, oh, no, that's fun. Goodbye. Forget that. The, found, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's saying the kingdom has always been prepared for a special place since the beginning of time. Okay? I want you to look at that again. Look what it says. Come, inherit 
the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And notice it's at the right side. It's at the right hand, okay? Now, if you got your finger there and you look about the kingdom that you're supposed to inherit that's been from the foundation of the world, I want you to go to page 77 in your little Bibles. The rest of you go to Luke, okay? Go to chapter 17 of Luke, okay? Now, look back again. Matthew 25, 34. Come, blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom. Inherit the kingdom. Inherit the kingdom kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, on page 77, Luke 17, 21, Jesus Christ in red letters in my Bible say, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Prepared from the very foundation, from the very creation of the universe, God's kingdom has been inside of human consciousness since the beginning of time. Did you want to say something? Oh, wait a minute. Here, come on up here. Maybe I should say something. Here's our second model. Notice he's wearing a great, beautiful T-shirt with black sneakers. Yeah, that's, that's great. Terrific. What do you want to say? Um, Matthew 25:41 says, "Then she, ha then shall he say." Also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. You see, you Double see, I'm not, see, I'm not, I know, see. So the left hemisphere is. See, look what he said. Did you see what he just found, Joey? Look at Matthew 25, 41. Those on his left hand, what does he say? Get out of here. Get out of here with the Bibles and the singing and the praying. Take off. I am talking to those at my right hand. Jesus Christ said, if you want to find, cast your energy, cast your net to the right side. Okay? Thank you, Joe, because I didn't see you. Great. Right on. Your face turned red, face turned red huh? Okay, we'll get her up here later. <laughs> okay, so there it is. It, come on, get excited about it. There's a few people here. We've got 300, pe 300 families out there watching this. In fact, I got a, we got a letter today from a lady in Minnesota that says, I want to be a monthly subscriber. And uh, she said, she's not even on the network. She says she watches the tape someplace else. I forget what her name is. Uh, what, she said, I want the monthly envelope. She's not even on the network. So they go other places and they watch these tapes. So let's share this stuff with people. You just found something that's tremendously exciting. You found out that this kingdom, which is within you on the right side and not on the left, as Joey showed us, OK? has been created for you inside of the consciousness of human beings since the beginning of the universe. And all of that time, religion is looking outside. Constantly looking outside. But the Lord Jesus Christ in your Bible and in my Bible says, no, the kingdom is within you. So that's been the plan of salvation from the beginning of time to allow you to freely exercise your will as a human being, as a God-type person, to find and to seek the, the, the location of that kingdom of God within you. So that's why it was so important to Jesus Christ that the first thing you did was seek within yourself for the kingdom. You know what Jesus said this morning to the religious people? He says, you know what you are? You're like a cup. It's nice and clean and shiny and white on the outside, but inside it's filled with extortion. He says, clean the inside of the cup first, and then the outside will be fine. In other words, seek first the kingdom which is within yourself. Get inside and meditate and get all that crap flushed out. You know what Buddha said? When you meditate, you drive the energy down into the ninth consciousness where the sleep, sleeping serpent is. And that sleeping serpent then awakens, and she, female spirit, she comes up and devours all of the garbage of all of the fears and all of the hurts and all of the past things and all of the things of people that said, you're not worthy and you can't do this and you can't come in our place and all this garbage. And it just swallows it away and you're clean. That's what Jesus was talking about. Allow that inner to be cleaned of all of those bad feelings and things that have been put in by other people and you'll be free. Free. And that's beautiful. So religion has waited and watched and saw it everywhere, but they have not looked to the place where Jesus said the kingdom is. They have not looked at the place where the Bible says the kingdom is within themselves. When we look at the universe, you've got to understand something. 
the universe has a meaning because we exist. Think of that. The universe has a meaning because we exist. If we did not exist, what would be the purpose of the universe? Who would look at it? Who would see the Big Dipper? There would be no Big Dipper because there would be nobody to see that there is a Big Dipper. There would be nothing. Orion, nothing. It is only there for you to see. And that is why Christianity has made such a horrible mistake by not looking at the zodiac and understanding the message that is written in the stars by God that you people see every Friday night here. They know nothing of that. See? And what then? If there had been no people, what would be the purpose? No one could see it. See? And so that's something you have to understand. The beautiful stars, the constellations, all of those things are up there for one purpose. You. You. Otherwise, they have no business being there. There's no need for them. There's no people. There's no need for a universe. There's no need for stars. There's no need for planets and constellations. There's no need for a zodiac. There's no need for any of it. But there is a need for it because you exist, and that's why it's there. So doggone it. Look at it. Understand it. Respect it. Make it a part of you. But here's the beautiful part. Inside of every person lies the beauty of a vast gold mine, a joy. And you know, it's so hard for you because of all of the things you've gone through in your life to even believe that it exists. Many have tried to force their way into the kingdom. There's drugs, there's booze. There's all kinds of things. There's religion. It tries to force its way in to the kingdom. Anything, anything possible. They tell you to chant this. They tell you to say this. They tell you to do this. They tell you to pray this. Anything possible to try to get yourself into the kingdom of God. Drugs are a, of, a, of, a, of a heavy way that people try to, to get high. Booze, get high. Whatever it takes to get high. They're trying to get into the... They're trying to, what you're trying to do is break away from them. Anything you have to do, break away from them. Take a look at on page 10 in your little Bible, Matthew 11. Matthew 11 and... It's on page 10 in your little Bible. Matthew 11 and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The violent take it by force. You know, sometimes, and this is the beautiful time of the year, you may see a little rosebud come out on a vine. And if you'll try to pry open that little rosebud for just a brief moment, you'll see that beauty of that rose, but only for a moment, and it'll quickly die. You'll force it open. You'll see it, but it'll fade because the, the, the growth has to be according to divine law. It has to be slow. It has to be in God's creative time. And so do you. See? You, can't, you can't come in. I don't, I don't really want to get involved in meditation where people are running around and doing this and banging this and banging that and banging the other thing to try to get you onto some kind of emotional high or get you screaming or get you thinking you're floating around anywhere because it's bull, absolute bull. You have to sit and you have to be patient and you have to sit and you have to sit and you have to sit. And just like the little rose, when it's time finally for the bud to release and for it to open itself, it will. Not before that. You can't pry it open with it can't pry it open with your hands. And remember the same thing with the spirit. Spirit is nothingness. You cannot understand it. You cannot touch it. You cannot see it. You cannot hear it. And you cannot feel it. Spirit is absolute nothingness. Trust yourself to that nothingness. Trust yourself to that nothingness. Jesus Christ put it this way. Take no thought for your life. Doesn't mean don't worry about your life. It means if you want to have life, take no thought. Take no thought for what you will eat. Take no thought for what you will wear. It doesn't mean don't worry about what you... Do you want to tell those Kurds that are up in, in Iraq not to worry because they don't have any food? That's what they have in a lot of these revised Bibles. Oh, don't worry about food. 
God will provide it for you. Ain't no God providing them food up there. People are shooting at them. Little babies. What happened to the little kids that are starving to death? You see them carrying off the little babies, burning them? They got them in a little sack somewhere. They're this big. What did they ever do to anybody? Huh? Well, come on. What did they ever do to anybody? Where's your just God? Where's your divine God? Where's your loving God? Where's your peaceful God? Why did he do something for them? Oh, he did for me. You see them on television. Yeah, my shoulder feels better. The heck with your shoulder. What about that little kid that is in a basket in Iraq that's dead? Why didn't he do something for her? For him? Huh? You know why? Because you are God and you are Christ and you're not allowing that God, you're not allowing that Christ to live and the children are dying and the children are suffering and the old are suffering and the people are starving and they're shooting and killing at one another because we're keeping the Christ entombed in our own rotten carnal religion. And nothing will save the children. No God will save the children. No Jesus will save the children. Oh, I see them come on television. Oh, we had a miracle. Sister, 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 so-and-so can hear better than she did. They just went a tornado through Kansas somewhere and wiped out about 300 families. Does he care more about sister so-and-so who couldn't hear so good and let the tornado wipe out 350 families? Come on, grow up. Grow up. It's not the way things. The only thing that you are here is to allow that Christ nature within you to explode and stop being conned by people. I, you know, I remember we used to go down, we went down to PTL one time, and there was a little black girl there who had muscular dystrophy or something like that. She was all over the place, you know, and a lot of those things. It was kind of grotesque. But we took a liking to her. His name was Charlene. Charlita. And I remember one night we came out of a meeting, and I carried Charlita out, and her and I... We've, I almost tripped, and I, know, I was getting her to her apartment. I sprawled on the lawn with Charlita in my arms, and she was laughing. I don't believe this, and she was saying, you know? We had such a good time. I used to feed her. I used to put the food in her mouth in the thing. I said, not so fast, she would say, you know? Beautiful girl, beautiful girl, filled with love. But do you know what it's like to take a child like that in a wheelchair into a healing line with these characters? Oh, I'm sure you want to come over here. Do you feel better? Yeah. How's your arms? Do you feel better? How do you feel better? Hey, they, they didn't go near her. Didn't go near her. Come on, come on. Let me come over here. Here's somebody over here. Let's, didn't go near her. We had to push her. I said, hey, this girl would like to be prayed for. Oh, yeah. Okay, sister. God, I command. I come against this thing. If I pray. They walked away. What the heck is kind of deal is this guy? Who's he kidding? Up there on television in front of millions of people. They couldn't see he was avoiding this little girl. They're going to heal that girl anymore than a man in the moon was going to heal that girl. Sure, it's easy. So, oh, you feel better? Yeah, my shoulder's not as sore as it used to be. What about that girl? It's got muscular dystrophy. Where's get, get her up and get her walking. Tell me such trash. Conning people. That's extortion. The great healer with his pompadour and his white suit and his tie and all this garbage and he's singing his songs. He's got rings on every finger and there he's sitting there. That little girl struggling to breathe. He didn't have the guts to go near her, let alone heal her. That's fakery. Carnival stuff. It's not the way God is. God says, you know what you do? Feed that little girl. Hold that little girl. Wash that little girl. Take that little girl in your house. That's the thing you do with that little girl. That's where the Christ comes in. Well, so there's the kingdom of heaven. It suffers violence, okay? And people try to take it by force, and that's for sure. And the misunderstanding of it is the most hideous part about it. Religion totally has consumed itself in itself. Its, its survival is all that counts. I don't really care. I, you know what? I got a job. See what I'm telling you? I don't have to come here to get my salary. So if you get offended, that's the way it is. I'm going to eat anyhow. Whatever I say, you know, it's not going to cost me a dime if you come or you don't come. And that's the way it's got to be. You can't compromise. Am I splitting? You can't compromise. I thought I was. You can't. Yeah, I'm drying up. You cannot compromise God's word because, oh, I'm going to offend somebody and I ain't going to have any money, you know? We'll do all right. Blonde and I will go, go off to Key West or wherever we go. That's not what I, But I'm talking that, not to you. I know you know what I'm driving at. You can't put some kind of a price tag and say, so tell people what they want to hear, you know. Oh, it's the devil's fault. It's no devil's fault. It's your fault. It's my fault. Who the heck we can about? Devil's fault. 
God's going to come down. God's going to nothing. God's got you down here to get straightened out and get me straightened out. Let's get going and we're supposed to be God. Do these things. Waiting for some God to come down here and pick up a little Buddha and say, you can't pick that box up. Don't blame God. Blame yourself. Can't pick it up. Find a way to get it picked up. Go find somebody stronger than you and say, hey, I can't pick that thing up. How about picking it up for me? Whatever you got to do. I can do that. I do that all the time. So I can't carry all these bags out of here. Be surprised if people come all over. What does mommy say? The bags are too heavy? You say, no, I, I'm tired out. <laughs> and I say, oh, and they get all feeling good. And good Christians come running down and pick up the bags. It's great. Okay. I, want you, I want to read you something Robert Browning wrote. Did you ever hear about Robert Browning? He said this, truth is within ourselves. It takes no rise from outward things whatever you may believe. There is an inmost center in us all where truth abides in fullness and around wall upon wall the gross flesh hems it in. See, all of you have been raised in the traditions of religion and they pray to God, they talk to God, they sing to God, they shout to God, but God is always out there somewhere. They don't know where. It's a, I, I thought the, the Russian cosmonaut hit it right on the button. Remember the first Russian cosmonaut? I think it was Yuri Gagarin. I don't see any God up here. Where? Where? Say. But he was just as foolish because he was looking outside in the universe in a spaceship, and here was God inside of him. And so what do we do? We pray, we look, we sing, and all this stuff. Let's take a look at page 486 in the Old Testament. I'm trying to get you to know who you are. I'm trying to get you to know that the God is an aspect of you and it will explode in you and you'll have God consciousness and Christ consciousness if you'll be still and like that rose. And don't try to pry that rose open. Let that rose bloom when it's ready to bloom. Huh? I'm, I'm getting excited because this is my last time for a couple of weeks. I had to get this out of my system, Al. Al's trying to find what that nut up there saying. The little saying? Was it? God gives, I can't remember that. God gives us one face and we put on another. That was in the Chinese fortune cookie. Now, you know that's got to be God. Came right out of the Chinese fortune cookie. God gives us one face and we try to put on another. Here it is. Now, here you're going to pray to God, right? Here's, Miss, here's Mary Gengar down there saying, Oh, God, I'm telling you, God, do this, God. Here's Mark, Oh, Jesus, do this, God. Here's Alvin, Oh, God, I need you to do this. Zach saying, Oh, God. And there's uh, Al Benson, Holy cow, God. Oh, God, what's going to happen? Oh, God. Oh, God. They didn't say nothing. Come on with me. Come on with me to Psalm 46, okay? And let's go to... Verse 10. See what God says. He says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still. In other words, Mary, Jengard, shut up. Mark, shut up. Al, shut up. Zach, shut up. And you, Benson, shut up. <laughs> I'm teasing all of you, you know obviously. But that's what God is saying. God is saying, you don't have to tell me what to do to make your life better. You have screwed it up royally yourself. Now shut up and let me tell you how it should be done. I will put it in the right side. It will come through the little electrons in your brain to the left side and you will have instruction. Please be still and listen to the universe. That's what God says. And there's something very beautiful in this same verse. Because you think you're so holy, I am born again. I am born again. I am saved. I am going to heaven. I go to church. I sow Afghans in the church. I drive the pastor to the bingo. Don't I do all of these things? So I am a born again Christian. That means I am going to heaven. But it says in Psalm 46, 10, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted 
among the heathen. Doesn't say I will be exalted among the Christians. Al, what happened? Doesn't say I will be exalted among the Jews. It doesn't say I will be exalted among religious people. It says I will be exalted among the heathen. Why? Do you think when the Indian chants to the great god of the forest, he knows who this is? Yes. Do you think when the African chances in his Zulu warriors and calls upon the great spirit to come down and bring harvest, he knows who this is? Yes, he does. All we have ever done for those people is send our missionaries and totally screwed them up. Lost everything that they had. We brought them such lovely things as cancer of the stomach with all of our burgers that they'd eat and never ate before. Show them how to freeze food and keep it for 60 years so that when you eat it, you're sure of getting colon cancer. Wasn't any cancer in Japan until they lost the war. Boy, we got even with them, didn't we? We got a Wendy burger on every corner, and they all go into the doctors. Never had it before. So you know you think, you think you say, wait a minute here. I am, my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So I'm going, I'm going to heaven. I am waiting for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Come on with me, I'm going to show you something. Page 23 in the little Bible, Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Let's see something here. We're going to stir things up when we get back. I'm running out of gas right now. Need to get some energy. Get back here. We're going to really tie some stuff on. We're going to really go. We're going to go for broke, right? Vito says he's going to give us a tile in the back that was soiled by the rain. I mean, things are getting good. <laughs> Telling you that. Here we go. Matthew 22. I want you to look at something. And watch it very carefully. And doggone it, show your friends. Matthew 22, verse 8. Okay? God says to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. What happened? Because they which were bidden would not meditate. They would not cast their energies to the right side. They would not enter within themselves. Instead, they stayed at church and sang Amazing Grace. They didn't do what the Christ told them to do. Huh. So then verse 9 says, go therefore into the highways. Where? Not into the low ways. Into the, look at me. Highways, not into the low ways, go into the highways. And what happens? If you're in meditation, you are sitting in the highway. Don't you see? The higher consciousness. And what does it say? Go into the highways, and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. Everybody who sits in silence in the highway is invited to the wedding. See why many have never gotten their invitation? <laughs> So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. Watch out, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. You can see somebody coming right into the wedding of the Lamb. Yeah, I'm bad, all right. I'm bad, but I'm here at the wedding. Let the wedding begin. Woo! Let the wedding begin and let the music come in because I am bad. But here, I, how did that bad person get to the wedding? He was in the highway. You know why? Because you do things that the system can't figure out why you do them. We were talking at lunch today. They don't know what's troubling you. They don't know. You don't know what's troubling you. You might have a glandular disorder that causes you to do something. You might have an endocrine disorder. You might have a hormone imbalance. You might have something wrong in the brain. They don't know that. But all they know they can do is point a finger and say, you're guilty, you're sinning. And you're trying to say, what's wrong with me? And why do I feel the way I do? And all of these things inside of you are going. They don't know. They don't understand the body. They don't understand the universe. They don't understand the mind. They don't understand the glands and the hormones. All they say, everybody's cut out of a cookie cutter and say, you shouldn't do this. They, know that, they don't know that you can't help doing that. See? But here God says, wait a minute. Whoa. All I've asked anybody, I don't care if you're a murderer, rapist, I asked you, get up to the upper room and I'll grab you in the highway and I'll take you to the wedding. Just get out and away from the evil one and the evil one is your own mind. Get away from the evil one 
which is your own mind, and up on that highway, I will come and I will take you to the wedding. Doesn't make any difference whether you said this or said that or said the other thing. Christianity says you've got to confess Jesus is Lord, exactly what they don't do. Because if you're going to confess Jesus as Lord, you're going to say, I can confess Jesus as Lord because I do what he says to do. I come and I sit and I deeply dig within myself and I practice the single eye and I cast my energies to the right side. I obey Jesus Christ. He is Lord. Who else can say that? What have they done? Do they go inside? No, they say don't go inside. Do they practice the evil, single eye? No, they say it's evil. Do they cast their energies to the right side? They don't even know what's on the right side. So what do they do? They read and they sing. And they read, and they sing, and they sit, and they stare, and they give money, and they read, and they sing, and they sit, and they stare, and they give money, and they read, and they sing, and that's all they do, everything. Bible studies, they study the Bible forever. Never do a thing it says. Study it, study it, and study it, and study it. Go to Bible studies. Where did Jesus say, I want you to go to Bible? Where did Jesus say, I want you to go to church? I want you to seek within yourself for the kingdom of God. I want you to practice the single eye. So what do you want to say? You know what they, you know what they, it's like going over to the Chinese restaurant and reading the menu and say, thank you very much. I read the menu. Now I'll leave. Aren't you going to eat it? Huh? What do I have today? Lo mein or No, I had chicken with cashew nuts. What am I going to do? Read about it? I didn't get any filling out of reading about chicken with cashew nuts. I had to devour it. I had to eat it. I had to let it enter within me. It filled me up. And I said, I have chicken with cashew nuts. <laughs> Ain't I something? See? Don't give me any more Bible studies reading about stuff. Never doing it. Never doing it. See? And the problem with, you know why they never do it? Because the church and religion tells them, you're not qualified to do it. What you're qualified to do is sit and donate. Put money in the pot and shut up. I'll tell you. I'll read more stories to you. I'll give messages and tell you stuff. Don't you do nothing. Okay. And that's the problem. I will be exalted in the heathen. And then it says in Psalm 46.10, uh, I will be exalted in the earth. In other words, that's the man of, uh, mind of man. So you yourself are an expression of God. He is trying to be exalted in you. And you do that by going up to the highway. And this expression manifests when you what? Be still. What they say to Moses, Moses, stop. God will fight for you. You stop. God will fight for you. You stop. And don't forget something, and, I, and you better hang on to this, that the message of Jesus Christ was not the message of Christianity, and it's not the message of Christianity. His message is the kingdom of God is within you. His message is Jesus is talking and saying, listen to me, look within yourself, and you'll find. And Jesus said, I have found the great discovery of the kingdom within. Now follow my instructions. What are his instructions? Look at page 110 in your little Bible. Go to the book of John. Go to John chapter 21, page 110 in the little Bible. John chapter 21, okay? And let's go to verse 6. First of all, in verse 5, he said, have you any meat? They said, no. You know what meat is? Huh? Meat is the, is the deep part of the spirit. Meat is, is, the, is the part of God where you devour. Meat is the strength for the mature person who really wants to be involved with God. This is an amazing thing, an amazing time we're living in. God is making his appearance felt all over the world, and religion, which has prayed for this all of its existence, now that it's happening, they say, it's a cult! It's a cult. It must be. There's things happening inside of people. See? That's what they say they've wanted, but when it actually happens, they don't want it. So they said, no, we don't have any meat. And what does he say? How are you going to get me? Cast your net on the right side, and you shall Fine. And as you know, the number nine is the number of uh, consciousness in the Bible and mysticism. Take my word for it now. I don't want to go through the whole thing. But if you look at John 21, chapter, uh, verse 11, how many fish did they catch? 153. And that's written like that because 5 plus 3 plus 1 equals 9. It's consciousness. Why didn't they catch it? Who counts how many fish they caught in the basket? Well, I was on 152. 
153. It's telling you something. Do you honestly believe that they wouldn't write this thing until some guy sat down and counted 150 squirmy fish? 153, because the number nine means Jesus is saying, this is his code, this is his parable. I am not talking about fish. I'm not talking about boats. I'm talking about nine. I'm talking about consciousness. This is the ninth consciousness of Buddha, where the sleeping serpent lies three and a half times coiled. That's the sleeping serpent that lies three and a half times coiled is Kundalini. Why is it coiled three and a half times? Because it's coiled three and a half times, because three times 360 degrees of the zodiac is 1080, and one half of 360 is 180, and 0, 6, 2, 1, 6, 8, 9. What? First eight what? Wait a minute. No, you're not getting away with that. Come on up here. Everybody else, come on. Mr. Benson, please. You're disturbing the service. Come up here right away. <laughs> come on up, Al. I want to introduce you to Al Benson. He's got a beautiful sweater on here that's made by Charles of the Ritz. No, no. This, this St. Pius thrift store. Okay. No. <laughs> you know, you can never get a one-liner on this guy. You will never get a one-liner on him. Here it is, John 21, chapter 8. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but it was 200 cubits, 3,600 feet. Is that what cubit 200 cubits? Yeah. That's right. That's right, because a cubit is 18 inches. Right. right. So it's 200, that's 3,600, so that would be 9. Dragon the net with a fish. How about that, huh? I'm telling you, you found another one. <laughs> Isn't he great? He is great. Al Benson. So now that's true. What he said is exactly true. It's always measured in, that, in those types of things because it has to come out to 9. And it's just consciousness. I know. I come back, they'll be all over the place, okay? Well, we're wrapping this and winding it down, but what has happened is Christianity has disintegrated into a movement of a man that they never understood. Everything is Jesus. They look to Jesus, they honor Jesus, but they don't know anything. They never understood him. And his message, they've never applied his message. And you can look at the cathedrals, and you can look at the television extravaganzas and all of that business. You can see the lavish ends that men will go to to attract people. Here, here is a Jesus who had sandals and a white robe and long hair, and he hung around with a bunch of characters up in the mountains, and, they, and what does he say on television? I mean, the gold and the, you know, all of the stuff. And he, you know, everything that he was not, they are. Everything that he would never do, they do. But the things that he would want them to do, they don't do. And you know, what's, what's amazing is that in all these beautiful church buildings, there is a Bible. Every place you go, you can go to the Crystal Cathedral, you can go to any of these magnificent churches. You can watch them on television with all of the gold and all of these guys with their pompadours. they got a Bible big enough to choke them. They all come on, hi, they, you know, they all got a Bible under their arm. Here I am with my Bible. Oh, they never go anywhere without their Bible. Hey, here's my Bible. Look at I got a Bible. So they should know something, shouldn't they? Look at page 130 in the New Testament. And let's take a look in the book of Acts. Okay? And let's go to Acts chapter 17, page 130 in your New Testament. The book of Acts. Acts chapter 17. All right? I want to read to you in verse 24. Okay, you with me? God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Ho, ho! Look out! What are you going to do with all that stuff? He dwells not in temples made with hands. Now watch this next one. I told you he's nothingness. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. Okay? Neither is worshipped with men's hands. You know? Do you know what that just said to you? It said to you what was said a little earlier. Shut up. 
You don't have to fold your hands. You don't have to kneel down. It's all irrelevant. You have to get up into the higher realm of nothingness where God dwells. And you cannot be attracted by a building because he doesn't dwell in a building. You have to understand his dwelling place is you. Inside of you. And he does not need you to go through any kind of litany or procession or go through any kind of ritual of any kind. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. He doesn't. He has only needed one thing to give you, but we will not sit still long enough to take it from the source. And what Jesus taught is that if you follow his directions, the door will open within you to the mind of God. As he said, knock via meditation and seek and it shall be open to you. I don't know if you ever heard of a Charles Fillmore. I want you to hang on every word that I read. It's very short, but I want you to hang on every word that I read that Charles Fillmore said. Okay? And this is what he said about Jesus Christ. He became consciously one with the absolute principle of being. Charles Fillmore is saying, Jesus Christ became consciously one with the absolute principle of being. Charles Fillmore said that Jesus Christ proved in his resurrection and ascension that he had no consciousness separate from that of being. He said that Jesus Christ proved in his resurrection and ascension that he had no consciousness separate from that of being. Therefore, Mr. Fillmore said, Jesus Christ was this being to all intent and purposes. He was not separated from being he was the being. He was not separated from God. He was the God. He was conscious with the absolute consciousness of God. He proved in his resurrection and ascension that he had no consciousness separated from that of God. Therefore, he was this God to all intents and purposes, yet he attained no more than what is expected of every one of us. He attained no more than what is expected of every one of us to be God, to return to the Father's house and to be conscious of nothing but the oneness of being God, the oneness of being Christ. Jesus, the Lord, attained that, and yet he attained no more than what is expected of everyone in this room. That is great stuff. That puts things into perspective of what your potential is. Your potential, if you will let it happen from the higher mind, is Godship, Kingship, Christship. And they'll never understand it. And Well, we had a... Uh, Good Sunday night here. Exciting Sunday night. I want to introduce you to a fine young man who uh, is going to be taking over the evening services while 